Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash petty revenge, where people get little wins on others, and the stories are super satisfying. And in today's episode, guys, it's all about bad neighbors. So if you've ever dealt with a bad neighbor, oh boy, these stories will leave you smiling. I hope you enjoy them. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So I've lived in the same apartment with my boyfriend for almost four years. Now it's not the best apartment, but I love the location. I've never really had any problems here because I'm a quiet neighbor that stays to myself. With that said, my new downstairs neighbor has made several stupid complaints. Complaints like me running my garbage disposal. But the most recent one was ridiculous. So the guy went and told management that there's been issues with my balcony. I got a call last week asking if I've been throwing anything over my balcony. I told the manager absolutely not. There's plants down below, so I had dumped a water bottle off into the plants before, but that's not harming anyone. Because of this call, I went to my balcony to investigate. I noticed my flower vase had fallen over, and some water may have spilled down. Not too big of a deal. There wasn't too much water in the vase when the wind knocked it over. Now I think that this is the end of that silly complaint, but I was wrong. So the weekend passes, and I get a nasty notice on my door. The notice said, pet violation for not picking up after my dog, which was a $50 fine. It also states that I'm at the risk of getting my lease terminated because of my violations. The only problem is I don't even have a dog. So I emailed the property manager and I said I do not have a dog, therefore I'm not paying this fine. She sends back a ridiculous email stating that she's received several complaints from my downstairs neighbor about pee coming from my balcony. So she assumed that I was letting my dog that I don't have pee on my balcony. Then she says, since I don't have a dog, that means me or my boyfriend are peeing on our balcony, and that I'm still in violation of my lease. Now this was just comical at this point. My boyfriend and I have never done this. We've never had any complaints in our four years here. It just so happened, as soon as I got a new downstairs neighbor, the complaints came rolling in. So here's where the revenge kicks in. I work night shift, so I don't go to bed until around 6am. Every morning, around 6am, I hear my new neighbor leaving for work. That's when my boyfriend and I decide to incorporate a new 2am workout when I get home from work, consisting of jumping jacks, running in place, and all sorts of fun stuff, just for my lovely downstairs neighbor. I've informed the leasing office that I won't be renewing my lease in 3 months due to this. So the next 3 months for my new neighbor is going to be hell. I hope he enjoys it. Oh man guys, I just hope OP makes those 3 months really count. Because nightmare neighbors who report you for every little thing is absolutely absurd and need to be taught a lesson. And guys, the peeing thing, like, who just assumes that since there isn't a dog peeing off the balcony, that it must be human pee? I don't know though, like, if I were in OP shoes guys, I'd be tempted to start peeing off the balcony because if you're gonna accuse me of something, might as well make it true, right? So I, a 34 year old male, lived in a nice quiet neighborhood. Most of my neighbors are elderly and we get along pretty great. That was until my new neighbors moved in. A couple are around my age with a baby and a dog and they never pick up after their dog. And yes, I've asked them to pick it up more than a few times and it got to the point where I stopped asking. It's annoying having to watch my steps walking in my yard and I feel I shouldn't have to pick it up. I've tracked dog crap into my house once and it was late at night and it sent me over the edge. But I kept my cool because I hate blowing up on people. And plus, I've asked so they know it's out there. Their dog also barks constantly day and night and lunged at a couple walking by and is never on a leash. Never on a leash. I don't know what breed it is, but it's a massive dog, easily over 110 pounds, like it's a big dog. The police even came to their house telling them to leash the dog or animal control will be called. Our HOA states that all dogs must be kept on a leash or inside an invisible fence at all times when outside. I know this because I read the whole HOA book. The book has breed restrictions, but not weight restrictions. So you can have a big dog, but only certain breeds aren't allowed in the neighborhood. With all that said, I once overheard them laughing about me asking them to pick it up. Like it was a comical thing to ask. Now I didn't say anything about it because I knew how I was going to handle it from here on out. And here's my petty revenge. So my neighbors got a new roof put on their house a year ago. So for the past five months, I've been going out late at night, 
picking up their dog crap and throwing it on top of their roof with a shovel. Their brand new roof is littered in dog crap. You can see it if you're far enough away. Where we live, it also rains a lot during the spring, so all that poop was just turning into liquid as the spring season went by. And now that it's July, it's just cooking up there. I've never smelt it, but I know it's been cooking. So today is around 98 degrees. It's pretty hot but nice out, and it's finally happened. I hear the wife yelling at the husband that their hole upstairs smells like crap. I can hear this because I'm sitting on my back porch right now sipping some iced tea. They can't figure out why or how, and the gagging is what made me laugh the most. I don't want the dog hurt or killed, I know it has to go somewhere and it can't hold its crap forever. I know this, but pick up after your dog. It's not my dog and I shouldn't have to clean up after it. You're welcome, neighbors. Signed, Petty Neighbor. Guys, I love this petty revenge so much because people who don't pick up after their dogs are horrible people and they deserve this happening. And hey, Opie's just returning what's rightfully theirs to begin with, right? And guys, I can only imagine how many dog turds were on that roof. Like, five months worth has gotta look ridiculous up there. And this person comments and shares their similar experience. This person says, Years ago, I had a neighbor who didn't pick up the poo. So I would scoop it up, walk it back to their house, sometimes only 20 or 30 feet behind her. I would carefully place it on the driveway just outside the back door of their car. They had three kids, and if they didn't pick it up, the kids would step into it getting into the car. When she yelled at me when she saw me do it, I just said, You don't care if anyone else's kids step in it, so no one cares if your kids do either. She started picking it up, at least while she was on our street with the dog. Again, some people gotta learn guys, and OP throwing the dog crap back onto the neighbor's roof, I think is pretty brilliant. So I'm house-sitting at the moment for my cousin. They live in a pretty swanky neighborhood full of McMansions. Nothing too fancy, just your common upper-middle-class suburban development. Anyhow, over the past few weeks, they've been having a new porch installed on the back of their house. The crew has a trailer parked out front so they can lock up their tools at night, which is no big deal, right? Well, apparently it is. This evening, I get a knock on the door. I'm always wary of solicitors, so I make it a point to look out the window before answering the door. After hearing the doorbell, it takes me a minute to get to the window. As I look outside, I can see a woman walking away with two little dogs. One of the dogs stops and proceeds to crap on my cousin's lawn. I wait until the dog's done, and I open the door. By this time, the woman's beginning to walk away, but she sees me and she turns around. The woman introduces herself as a board member of the HOA, a homeowners association, and she looks very annoyed. Without taking a breath, she launches into a lecture about the trailer parked out front. How she's lucky to have walked by and caught this horrendous violation of the HOA rules. And how the trailer is an eyesore on the neighborhood. She then says she won't report me to the board and she suggested a fine if I remove it immediately. I calmly inform her about the patio construction and how the crew needs to store their tools and materials at night. But she's absolutely foaming at the mouth about how tacky it is to have a trailer in front of the house. And again, it's against HOA rules. That's when I calmly inform her that I'm not the homeowner, nor the owner of the trailer. And there's not much I can do about it, especially at 6.30pm on a Friday night. Nevertheless, she's adamant that I do something. By this point, I'm fed up with this woman, who obviously has nothing better to do with her evening than bother her neighbors with bullcrap. So I look at her and I casually say, Hey, just out of curiosity, what's the fine for not picking up after your dog if it craps on someone else's lawn? And I tell ya, the look on her face at that point was classic. The woman stutters a bit before telling me that she would have to look into that. I told her that I'd be grateful if she did because my cousin's been suspecting a neighbor of letting their dog poop on his lawn. So he set up a video camera in the window to catch the culprit. Upon hearing the word camera, the woman gets a little flustered and told me to forget about it, and just to tell the patio crew to hurry up. And then she walked away with a huff. It's a small victory for sure, and quite satisfying, nevertheless. Stories like this make me glad I don't live in an HOA neighborhood anymore, guys, because stuff like that used to drive me absolutely insane. And shame on that Karen for not picking up after her dog when she's out enforcing these rules. I swear, people will let the smallest amounts of power go to their heads. So here's the setup. Our tale begins about 10 to 11 years ago. It was summer, and my parents wanted to go on vacation. 
Me, being a 16 year old with both a gaming addiction and seeing my cue to live the free, independent, supervised life, I offered to house and dog sit while they and my sister went on vacation. The first week they were gone, gaming took up 90% of my time and I developed the day and night schedule of a back end developer. I still did all the chores around the house, with a few exceptions, since I deemed they could wait. That's when I checked the mailbox and there's a handwritten letter from the HOA. The letter said that the grass in front of my lawn was way too tall, according to regulations. So I went out, took a look at the grass, which was maybe one centimeter too tall. The same day I cut the grass because might as well do so to keep the peace. The day after, a new letter came. This time, the roses in my front yard were going too far out through the fence by 15 centimeters. I once again comply. On the third day, my parents' backyard bushes were too tall. And here's where I finally get irritated since you have to enter my parents' property to check the bush height. With that, I go and visit my next door neighbor, who I knew was on the HOA board. I ask her about the letters and she looks through them and laughs. She tells me that these weren't sent by anyone on the board. And these handwritten letters are from the mega Karen who lived a few houses down. The woman had been kicked out of the HOA board after she poisoned three dogs in the neighborhood with rat poison. The dogs luckily survived, but she's that kind of woman. So not wanting to deal with her, I decide to let the case rest and leave my parents' bushes alone. So fast forward a week into my parents' vacation. After being alone for seven days, playing non-stop video games, I decide to do something else. As any teenager would, I start to plan a gathering of some sort because I'm starting to need some social interaction. Since I'm a gamer, instead of holding a straight up party, I decide to invite friends over for a LAN party, so we could play a video game called Counter Strike. Fast forward to said LAN party. My parents' dining room smells like teenage farts, Axe body spray, sweat, and chips mixed together. Typical LAN stuff. At 1am, there's a loud knock on the door. So I go out to see two cops looking at me. Cop number one says, we have a report that there's a loud party going on. And we were told that there's several minors here doing drugs. I tell the officer, I have no idea what you're talking about. The officer tells me, we've had a frantic woman calling constantly, which is why we came. But it seems we're more of a disturbance than you guys are. We'll leave you to it then. Two days after, I get another knock on my door, and there she is, standing in front of me, the mega Karen. The woman starts screaming that me and my drug party kept her up all night, and that I'm a horrible brat who needs to tend to my bushes if my parents don't want to lose the house. At this point, I stop her, and I remind her that 1. The HOA doesn't have the power to do that, 2. That I know she was kicked out of the HOA, so she has no say anymore, 3. That I didn't even have a party, and 4. That she needs to stay the F away from my backyard. Hearing me say that, she got even madder, and she starts screaming that she would have me and my parents arrested. And then she admits that the poison treats were meant for my dog as well. I slammed the door at this point. She had royally pissed me off because no one threatens my good boy. No one. So here's my petty revenge. I had about four days before my parents returned, so I made them count. I went over and talked with a neighbor surrounding her house. I told them that I would do all the yard work for them, which involved loud equipment around her house. Legally, we were allowed to make noise from 8am to 8pm with yard work. So with that, I began. After the first day, Karen came out and she screamed at me because she knew what I was doing. She even threw a rock at me, but I didn't care. I was gonna make as much legal sound as possible. Whenever she complained, I just told her that her plants weren't up to HOA standard. So Friday rolls around and it's 8am. Me and my friends are gathered bright and early in front of her house. We have all the tools ready. We turn on the speaker and the speaker set to the exact legal limits of how loud the music's allowed to be. And with that, Karen lost it. She screamed constantly for an hour and even called the cops twice. But there was nothing they could do about it. I was just doing yard work. If she wants to complain about a loud party, we'll give her something to complain about. We kept it up to the exact time limit. All I can say is kudos to OP because man, that is a lot of physical work OP did. Just to spite a Karen neighbor. Like personally, I don't think I would have spent 4 days doing yard work from 8am to 8pm just to annoy a neighbor like that. But hey, to each their own, right? My wife and I live in a condo in a nicer part of our town. Not Beverly Hills or anything, but it's nice, quiet, and safe. We have neighbors that are the exact opposite of that. They're rude, loud, and unsafe. When they first moved in, I was nice to them. 
I would say hi, offer to help carry things, and corral their kids. I tried to be welcoming, but also wasn't super pushy with it. I wasn't the neighbor that would go to your door and say welcome, but if I saw you in the parking lot, I would say hi, and if we knew each other, we'd chat. Anyways, I've always been nothing but polite to these people, and they've been nothing but rude. They would flip me off when I said hi, yelled at me when I stopped a ball their son dropped from going into the parking lot, all sorts of stuff. So after a while, I gave up on trying to be friendly. I wouldn't be rude, but I wouldn't greet them or go out of my way to help them. It turns out that they're rude to everyone. My next door neighbor, who's a kind old man, once asked them to pick up trash they dropped in front of his door, and they called him names for it. They've also kicked my pumpkin every year, and they've ripped my Christmas lights off and cut my inflatable decorations that I put out. That pushed me over the edge. Don't touch my decorations. These people are pieces of garbage. So with that said, on to the petty revenge. Two months ago, I come out to my car, and there's a glob of paint smeared over a small section of my back window. I had to scrape it off and clean it, making me late to work. When I got home, a neighbor stopped me and said that their cameras caught the rude neighbor smearing something on my car. I figured as much, but now I have proof. Two can play at that game. So I waited and planned. I walked out of my complex frequently, taking note of who had cameras and where they faced. I waited until last night, when they parked their car out of sight of any units with cameras, and I went out at 1.30am to exact my revenge. I went to their car, and I let out the air from their tires. Not fully flat, but enough for them to notice right away, and not be safe to drive. At least over half empty. After the tires were flattened, I put their valve caps back on, but I added a special surprise. I added an adhesive called Liquid Nails, a super strong super glue. Not a ton, you can't really see it when you walk by, but it's enough that you'll never get those caps off without ruining the stems. After work, a neighbor stopped me on my way to my door, and said they tried to get the caps off to fill their tires, but they couldn't. So they had to call a tow for their car, and then get an Uber to get everyone to school and work. Today was also our last day, before we moved into our new house, so I'll never see them again. I've never felt happier than today, knowing I'll be rid of those asshats. Guys, that was a perfectly executed petty revenge. And super gluing those valve caps on, holy cow was that ever evil. But hey, crappy people should get a dose of karma, shouldn't they? Even if you have to take matters into your own hands and help the karma along. And guys, people in the comments saying what they've done to crappy neighbors is wild. This person says, I once ran a bead of super glue along wiper blades. He didn't know until he needed them. And this person says, I did honey on the windshield and peanut butter under the door handles. Okay, honey I can agree with, but maybe not peanut butter because you never know when your petty revenge will hospitalize someone. And this last one, oh boy. This person says, I once crazy glued my crackhead neighbor's door lock after a particularly nasty fight. They thought they'd been evicted and they moved out of their own accord. So about four years ago, I used to live in a nice HOA in a small town in Texas and enjoyed having only one neighbor over my backyard fence. The plot was about two acres and the other side of the backyard butted up to a hay field. The stars were beautiful at night because of virtually no light pollution until the neighbor decides to install an incredibly bright security light over their back porch aimed right at my back patio and bedroom windows. I tried to ignore it at first and put shades in the bedroom. But out on the patio, it was like having a bright LED headlight in your face all night. I consulted the HOA about adding a privacy addition to my fence to increase its height. And they said no, because it's already at the 8 foot max allowed height. They said there was nothing in the bylaws or whatever about bright lights, so nothing they could do. So I hated for this to be the thing where we finally had a formal greeting. After three years of back porch waves. So I walk over and rang the doorbell with $20. I politely explained how the light was causing the aforementioned nuisance and asked if there's any way that I could convince him to point the light down or in a different direction, and even offered to buy him a case of beer, the $20, out of goodwill and even a new motion sensing light. The guy seemed nice and agreed to point it down, but after waiting a month, nothing changed. So I went back to have another polite conversation and he said he'd changed his mind and that he was going to leave it on every night and leave it pointed as is. What an a-hole, right? So here's the petty revenge. Needless to say, I was a bit upset diplomacy failed and started to figure out how to win. 
If the military taught me anything, there's always ways to adapt and overcome. So I start researching fast-growing plants to create big privacy walls, and reading through the HOA bylaws and city-state ordinances about what I could or couldn't plant. I quickly discovered running bamboo. Despite being very invasive, it would grow super fast to make the neighbor's house and light disappear from view. And there was nothing on the HOA slash state slash city books to prevent me from planting it, or cause legal recourse if it spread and grew on his side of the fence. The only thing he could do is to cut anything that grew on his side of the line. So I pulled the trigger, and I planted a bunch of golden bamboo, which grows and spreads crazy fast in Texas, and grows up to 20 feet tall. I didn't care if it took over the fence line, because his house is 15 feet from the fence, while mine was 50 yards away. So I planted a bunch right against the fence, and only put root barrier on my side, to prevent it spreading into my yard. Within 6 months, his house and light were gone from view, replaced by a pretty bamboo jungle row at the edge of my yard. Within a year, he complained that it was growing into his yard via mailed letters. They went right into the trash with no response. The guy rang my doorbell once, and I just looked at him through the window, but never answered the door. I sold the house, and I moved two years after planting the bamboo for a career opportunity. It's been two years since I sold, and I just checked the property on Google Earth, and his entire backyard is bamboo. What a revenge that was, guys. And again, I can't say the guy didn't deserve it. Like a case of beer and a new floodlight to point my light down a bit, I would have taken that in a heartbeat, guys. Actually, I would have been considerate of my neighbors and not pointed it at them in the first place. But that's crazy though, right? Like, I don't know how crazy bamboo grows, but I can only imagine that his whole backyard is basically ruined, right? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash petty revenge. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I hope the revenges were satisfying. And if you guys missed the last episode, it's in our slash entitled people where a Karen destroys her own car and she demands OP's car. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.